Good morning and welcome to Sunday Worship with St Matt's Bristol. My name is Ian, I'm the vicar and it's a real joy to be sharing this time with you. Just a couple of items of church family news before we go on with our service of worship. Firstly to say that next week we are starting our programme of summer worship which is always a bit different during this time, this holiday season and it will be shorter and a different structure and we very much hope that you'll enjoy our summer worship together as we do something a little bit different. So we look forward to seeing you on those. And secondly, just to say to St. Church, uh, St. Matthew's Church members, please keep on praying those stewardship commitments in. We value a commitment form from every single member of the church, whether you can give financially or not. It is the encouragement of knowing that you are praying for and supporting our church ministry at this time. So let's just have a moment's quiet uh, to still our hearts and then we will have our first Song of Worship, a beautiful hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, sung by the St. Matt Singers and done to uh, a special arrangement. So let's have a moment's quiet. And so now we worship together in the songs of this great hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, on which the Prince of glory died for you and for me.
So now we come to the time in our service together where we can reflect on the past week and have a few moments silence as we do so and bring anything before God that's on our hearts. And then we're going to say a statement of faith, an affirmation of faith, what we believe as Christians. So a few moments of quiet prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And a special colic prayer for this Sunday. Lord God, you left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our Bible reading, which Deborah is going to bring for us to us from Matthew chapter 14, and then I will be sharing some thoughts on that passage with us. There will then be some music which will be quietly played, giving us the opportunity to sit and reflect on what we've heard from the Word of God, what God has spoken to us about today. And then that will be followed by our prayers of intercession and our Lord's Prayer. The reading is taken from Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them the to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Lord God, as we reflect on your holy gospel now, please open our hearts and our lives to what you have to say to us today. May we know you, the true and living God, at the centre of our lives. Amen. Next week, we're going to be starting our summer programme where we're going to be looking at the fruits of the Spirit uh, over the summer period. Uh, but just before we do that, um, this Sunday, uh, I've chosen a passage from Matthew's Gospel, the very well-known passage, that reading um, of the feeding of all those people, uh, the miracle uh, of the feeding of the 5,000. And uh, right at the beginning of this reading, we have again a word often used to describe Jesus' reaction to those around him. It says he had compassion on them. Compassion. And that is love that has moved to action. Compassion is love that has moved to a loving response to do something for people. And it can't have been easy for Jesus. In this particular circumstance here, he would still be in grief, having heard about John's death. And if you're in heavy grief, you will know how hard sometimes it is to keep on going, keep on seeing people, keep on doing the usual things when you just want to be on your own. 
You want to be alone with your thoughts and your grief. Yet despite this, Jesus ministers to this crowd who he finds are around him. So often through his Holy Spirit, God ministers to those around us in unexpected ways and at unexpected times. In grief and many other times. Often when it's not convenient. In and out of season. There is no on-off switch for the compassion and love of God. Even when we are overwhelmed, God can enable us to reach out to others. I know there have been times in my life when, in spite of the difficulty of others, it is they who have ministered and given to me. And I'm sure that has happened to you too. Maybe you've been that person who's been struggling with big things in your life, yet, by the grace of God, your compassion has moved you to support others. So let's look at three particular aspects of this passage. Firstly, Jesus challenged his disciples. Look at the disciples' reaction. They wanted to send the people away. Jesus wanted to help them. In a way, the disciples' reaction was a logical and reasonable response because it was a huge logistic. But it wasn't a compassionate response. Sometimes we can justify our response or our lack of response to something with logic and reason, all from up here. But are we responding with our heart, responding with compassion to those around us as we do that? I remember in my last parish, the very strong views from a materially very comfortable person on the many reasons why it was always a waste of time, they said, to give away to any emergency appeal fund for something because the money never got there, did it? The money was always up, misused somewhere else. There was always corruption or whatever it was. He found all those reasons not to give. And he denied himself by doing that. He experienced an act of being compassionate. And yes, often faithful too, with circumstances so unknown and so far away. When we give of ourselves, we, we need to give unconditionally and then trust it to God. But the compassion of God's love should be our driving motivation. Jesus gave to the disciples in order that they may give to others. And just as Jesus stretched the loaves and the fishes, he challenges us to stretch our faith. Are you, am I, are we stretching our faith? Now maybe can we stretch our faith this coming week? Secondly, Jesus had confidence in God. Look at what the disciples actually said. They said, we have nothing here, but we only have bit of that half empty rather than the half full scenario, isn't it? A relative of mine was someone who had this habit, and we always used to laugh about it actually with them, of saying, oh, that's an absolute nightmare. Great holidays are first relayed to us via the dreadful journey home, which was a nightmare. Life is lived with the worry of all the disasters that could happen. That could be a nightmare, rather than lived in the grace of the life that Jesus Christ brings us. Jesus accepted what God had given him. He accepted what was available. And just look at the sequence of events here. Jesus actually asked the people to sit down, as if for a great banquet, before the food was then multiplied. And he then looked up to heaven, and he looked up to heaven rather than to the small amount in his hand. And he trusted God for his grace and his provision. That's living life with a cup of faith, looking up to heaven and a cup which is full of the faith and love of God. Through Jesus, God can meet our very deepest needs. I wonder, what are your deepest needs today. 
Go on trusting in God each and every day. And if you're wondering how this is so, well, let's just look at Jesus' next action. Because thirdly, Jesus committed everything to God in the breaking of the bread. Jesus broke the bread. And when did he do that again, most significantly for us? At the Last Supper. Jesus broke the bread. And in this act, which foreshadowed the Last Supper, we have a reminder of how Jesus' own body, broken for us, is the way in which Jesus does meet our deepest need. Our need for reconciliation with God. Our need to be completely loved and cared for. Our need to know meaning and purpose in our lives, which can be fulfilled utterly and completely by having a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. So today, may I encourage you to look upwards to heaven in your life. Take what God gives and believe in his love for you. There is only one person who can meet our real and deeper needs and fulfill all those needs, and that is Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, if we think about the practical but also compassionate, loving way in which you fulfill the needs of all those people, We pray that like Jesus, we will raise our hearts and our eyes and our minds to heaven, to you. And allow our compassion for the world to move us to loving action. So that your transforming love can be shared wherever we can. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. to a time of intercession and for our prayers today I would like us to focus on different parts of the body and how we might use them to praise God and bless the world around us. We think first about our head. Father we know that sometimes we can get lost and distracted by our own thoughts, overwhelmed by worries and fears, to-do lists and so on. So much so that often our prayers don't come easily and we struggle to spend quiet time with you. Forgive us when we become too inward looking. Help us to focus on you, to fill our minds with your word, and remember your promises to us. We ask that you would transform us by the renewing of our minds through the power of your Holy Spirit. And we pray for the pre-CC. We pray for wisdom as they continue to make decisions about the future plans for St Matthews, particularly in relation to finances and prioritising expenditure over the coming months. Be with them in their discussions and guide them in their decision making, we pray. Amen. We think now about our mouths. Father, take our lips and bless them. May our voices and words always speak of you and may they be a blessing to those whom we meet across the spectrum of our lives. Help us to speak your truth in all situations. This week we pray for our mission partner Mosaic Middle East, giving thanks for their work with the persecuted and vulnerable communities in Iraq and Jordan. 
we ask that you would bless their words as they seek to help people learn skills and develop sustainable livelihoods. We pray to you for our brothers and sisters at St George's in Baghdad and ask that you would protect them and keep them safe. Amen. Let us now focus on our hearts. May we turn our hearts towards you, Lord, and may they be fully committed to you. Father, we ask that you would give us open and loving hearts, aware of the needs of those around us in this ongoing time of uncertainty. We pray for those whom we carry on our hearts for whatever reason. We bring them to you, as well as those who are unwell or struggling with life, and ask that you would comfort them and bring them healing and peace. This week, we pray especially for the family and friends of Simon Alcock, whose funeral is this coming Tuesday at St Matthew's. Father, we thank you for all that Simon brought to the life of this church whilst he was part of our community, and ask that you would comfort all those who mourn his sudden loss. Amen. We focus on our hands. As we pray, we hold out our hands to receive your Holy Spirit, Lord giving thanks for its work in each one of us, praying it would continue to draw us closer to you. As we reflect on the theme of communion, we hold out our hands to receive the bread and the wine in remembrance of your body broken for us and your blood shed for us on the cross, believing in your deep love for us. Heavenly Father, take our hands and bless them. May the work of our hands be a blessing to those people we meet, be it creatively or practically, and in the smallest of gestures. Finally, we think of our feet. Lord, take our feet and bless them. May we walk only in your way. Help us to keep our feet on the right path, trusting that you have placed each one of us in the right place at the right time to do your will. Like the disciples, may we be challenged to stretch our faith in unknown circumstances knowing that you meet our deepest needs. Amen. We bring our time of prayer to a close by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It has been wonderful to share this time of worship with you today. Uh, may you know God's uh, peace and encouragement uh, from this worship as you go out into a new week. Uh, I'm going to just share a final prayer of blessing now. And then we will have our final song, our last song, which is My Jesus, My Saviour, where we can shout to the Lord in joy and thanksgiving for all that he has done for us. So a prayer of blessing to send us on our way. We are the body of Christ. Go and be hands, reaching out to the needy, holding the friendless and willingly receiving God's love. Go and be feet walking the extra mile, striving for others, and humbly letting Jesus wash you. Go and be tongue, chatting the good news, welcoming all, and allowing God's Spirit to speak to you. We are the body of Christ. Praise, Christ. Praise God, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us and all whom we love, this day and this week and always. Amen.
Matthews is a church in Kingsdown and Bristol and we love this city, we love the people of this city and we want to connect with you especially if this is your first time joining us at church. Please do send us an email if you'd like to know more about what we do or if you'd like to know more about Jesus and you don't know him already, we would love to get in touch with you. Please do subscribe to this channel and find us on our website if you want to know anything more about us. Thank you so much for joining us.